Welcome to Love in the Love Boat, where we break down episodes of one of the greatest romantic comedy drama television series of all time. I'm Ishvan, Chicagoland's beloved children's musician and TV fanatic. And I'm Michelle, pop culture enthusiast. So come aboard. We're expecting you to join us for another edition of Love in the Love Boat. Welcome aboard. It's episode nine. I cannot even believe we're almost midway through the first season. Yo, Mike. Yes. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Nothing. Just kind of going over my notes here. Kind of. You got copious notes, or you got like <laughs> light notes? What kind of notes you looking at there? The ones I really can't read. <laughs> oh, good. My handwriting is terrible. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Let's just get right to it. Our storylines this week: Romance Roulette, written by Howard Albrecht and Saul Weinstein. We also have The Captain's Captain, written by Ann Gibbs and Joel Kimmel. And finally, we have Hounded, written by David Ketchum and Tony DeMarco. Tony! He's your favorite, right? I just like his name, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because we also have another awesome Italian named person as a guest star. Do we ever, do you want to talk about the director too? You could. I don't have any notes on the director. I do. Go for it. The person who directed this episode is a director by the name of Jack Arnold. He and I share a birthday, October 14, except for the fact he was born in 1912. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was not, so. And he directed this? Wow, he must have been old when he did that, right? Wow. Oh, old in Love Boat years, yes. <laughs> but he pretty much directed just a ton of, like, cool TV shows that we loved when we were kids, like Bionic Woman, Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew. Oh, wow. Buck Rogers. Oh, that's what's his name? Jack Arnold. Jack Arnold, right? He did on, some Jack. Brady brunches and then Love American style. And then like he started his career, it looks like doing a lot of like B movies, like The Incredible Shrinking Man, Tarantula, Revenge of the Critter, stuff like that. So um I'm definitely gonna do a little more research on him because he sounds like an interesting guy. Jack Arnold, J A. That guy rules. Mm-hmm. All right, well, while we're on the topic of all this, let's just go through our, our, our cast now, our guests on the show. But we have a weird uh, sort of anomaly because we have a person now who is somewhat pulling double duty, meaning he is a guest star, yet he is also on the crew. This is unprecedented. It's a person who goes by the name Vincent Baguetta, <laughs> and he plays uh, Frank Valoni. He is the ship's plumber. Who you never see ever. No, not until this episode. And I'm going to guarantee we'll probably never see him again. Right. But he is one of the people on, on the ship. Um, but also, they they don't mention him in the beginning. The four people that they give credits to are Gary Berghoff. Most of you will know him as Radar from MASH. We have Judy Canova. And the Canova name I recognized. And this is the mother of Diana Canova, which normally I frown upon nepotism, but, you know, hey, that's the way it goes. We have Jane Curtin from, I know her best from SNL, but she was also on, what was that show? Kate and Allie? Kate and Allie. No. I love, yeah? I thought that's what it was. Yeah, I think and that right. was a good show. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed that show as a kid. Mm -hmm. We have Phil Silvers, who was like this, he, I found out that his nickname was the King of Chutzpah. <laughs> Bill Silvers, King of Chutzpah. He was like on every single show. Are you going to try to take that crown? <laughs> no. No. Bill Silvers, like this cartoony older guy. He had a TV show back in the day, his own like talk show, the Phil Silvers show. Yeah. Or comedy show or something. Found out he was a compulsive gambler, too, through my <laughs> Not research. Not a surprise. Yeah. Um, and those are the only four people that get, get, get um, credited. But we also have on this ship Joanna Kearns, who later was the mother on Growing Pains. We have Susan Heldfond, who I don't really know a whole lot about. Sorry, Susan. And we have David Landsberg sort of playing a very classic nebbish character. He's not he's not a featured person, but he definitely plays a role that you will remember. So I guess let's start with the Gary Berghoff radar one, which I thought to be a little odd. It's so basically he, he becomes at some point trapped in his cabin with a German shepherd. But... It was confusing because I didn't understand how the dog even got on the ship. All right. I agree that it's confusing. I just disagree in what element was confusing. Uh, I missed this too, but because I watched these two times, then I get all the little details. It was like a security dog. Like they had called the ship. Gopher tells them like their, a dog got loose. So has anyone seen a dog? It was part of the security. 
So that's how the dog got on. The part that's truly confusing is briefly after Gary Berghoff makes his appearance. Hello, welcome aboard. So long, rat race. And hello, fun. Welcome aboard, Mr. Flanders. Donald, then what time the festivities start? Well, as soon as we assign you your cabin. <laughs> Let's see, F-131. Oh, it's a lovely one. Who cares? I'm never going to be in there anyway. I'm here for sun and fun. Can I swim now? Absolutely. That's funny because I didn't know how when I left home this morning. <laughs> he's in his cabin and he's preparing because he's like a party animal to go out and just really make the most of this cruise. He's in the bathroom preparing himself and then he turns around and the dog is in his room. Right. My question is, how did he not see the dog in the room? Because the door is shut to the cabin, so he would have, have to had to have walked into the room. Wait, did he not notice the dog sitting there? And and then he turns around and it's there and it freaks him out and he becomes trapped in his cabin uh, for the majority, actually for the almost the whole cruise. Correct, which I thought was just kind of crazy too. It's just this this they really this is not like a major thing. This is just something to turn to uh, here and there for sort of completely classic clowny comic relief for yeah. sure we always have that on every single cruise they are doing it differently and that this is the first time this sort of scenario has happened which is somewhat interesting but it really doesn't focus on them very much because they're just doing a couple of clowny things throughout but that's how that <laughs> happens you know gary Berghoff kind of gets stuck there and we basically have summed up his entire story yeah line. i mean he gets a phone at some point and then he calls the the captain or gopher gets gets a hold of gopher and they, then they're trying to get the dog out of the room unsuccessfully the major sort of controversy on the ship, though, is we get to meet Captain Merrill Steubing's father. Correct. Phil Silvers. The King of Hutzpah is Merrill's dad. He also was a ship's captain. So yes. he's following in his father's footsteps, I the family he's business. Retiring, right? He's recently retired. That's no. why he's on the ship. He was forced into retirement, I believe. Oh, yes. But he comes on, and his dad is not the worst person in the world, but as you would imagine, kind of a Stickler. commandeering, difficult kind of a guy. Yeah, kind of bossy, kind of telling Meryl what to do, which I, he doesn't like. There's obviously some kind of relationship there that's not wonderful between him and his dad. A little bit of tension. Yeah, so he just storms onto the ship. Got Meryl Storming Senior reporting. Welcome sir. aboard. How are you, sir? Father. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to pipe you aboard, sir. Glad to have you aboard, sir. Anything you want, sir. Yeoman Purser Smith, sir. Go for it, sir. Well, I didn't want to keep your crew at this fever pitch for the entire cruise. Well, they're only doing their job, sir. Will you all relax? I'm not a captain anymore. I'm just a passenger. Here for a little vacation. Now, stow my gear, ready my cabin, and I'll meet you in your quarters at 1,900 hours. Look at I. Hey, yeah. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Now you know why my first two words were mommy and And we are off to the races with what do you call him? Stubby? Stubby. <laughs> Stubby's his nickname, you guys. And then thirdly, what do we have, Michelle? We have the romance roulette, which is three college friends that reconnect on the boat to take a trip together. Um, one has already been divorced twice. The other two, I'm not sure they were ever married. Um, Jane Curtin's character is kind of like a bookworm, straight laced. She doesn't really seem like she wants to go out, maybe stay in the cabin and read a book, where Joanna Kearns and the other woman are kind of like ready for a good wild time and wanting to do all kinds of crazy stuff. Crazy stuff like? Hey, let's play romance roulette. Oh, no, no. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> We've got a whole boatload of guys to play it with. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, romance roulette. Come on. I thought we gave up that nonsense in college. Hey, what is wrong with picking up a guy, having a little fun, and then dumping him? Men do it all the time. <laughs> Look, I am not about to make a play for some total stranger just because he happens to blurt out some silly word we pick. We're playing the game and that's all there is to it. And Regina, you're wearing one of my suits. The only guy you can attract in this thing is Jacques Gusteau. <laughs> See you in the deep end. Now, Jane Curtin's really not down with this. She doesn't want to do this, obviously. But she's also just there to reconnect with friends. So she kind of, like, gets dragged into this scenario. Their uh, trigger word or the word that they find is what? Screwdriver. Screwdriver. So they're waiting to hear, you know, some man, hopefully an attractive 19 sort of late 70s attractive man say this. And that's where the hijinks ensue. 
because the Joanna Kearns, wait, she had Doc. I think she was looking at Doc at first. Correct. She was at the bar, the poolside bar, waiting for him to say the word screwdriver, but he just kept saying orange juice and vodka, which was frustrating her. And then the other guy, the mousier guy, came up and ordered a screwdriver. And so she ended up having to go off with him. The rules of romance roulette, you have to abide by those rules. If somebody says it, you're going to have to go with that guy. Correct. And then her other friends slid on in and got there in time for Doc to say screwdriver. Well, she just like pushed him into it. She's like, can I, whatever, I can't remember. She just like immediately just flat out said it. So then she got hooked up with Doc. And then (laughs) then we meet, what was his name? Frank (laughs) Baloney shows up to fix Isaac's sink. And Jane Curtin immediately falls in love with him because he refuses to button the top two buttons of any shirt that he is wearing on the ship. Right, and literally is just wearing his worker's jumpsuit with no shirt underneath, exposing his chest hairs. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to post a photo of Mr. Frank Baguetta or Vincent Baguetta where at some point, if it wasn't enough for you, just the two buttons, you get to see this man completely with his shirt off at, on this cruise. Clearly, he was very proud of his chest and his Oh, my chest goodness. It is, a, it is a featured moment on the ship, and it's kind of spectacular. Because you are correct. In every scene there, that shirt, those shirts were unbuttoned to a long, lengthy degree. Either he or somebody could not wait to get that shirt off of him, and it, it paid <laughs> off on this episode for sure. You're going to get to see it, and there's no way I'm not posting that. He shows up, and then she sees him, and then he asks for his screwdriver. <laughs> and then, she, and it's kind of cute, and then she's holding onto it and she won't let it go and then he comes up and they make steamy eye contact so jane Curtin is a teacher as i believe we mentioned earlier and she spends a lot of time in her room so the the maintenance guy comes up to the room and she's reading he's a plumber he's not a maintenance guy and they really really drive home that he's some sort of like blue collar slob and something like that you know and i don't appreciate that at all on this cruise i think that they hit that a little too hard as well as the italian element of things and i was wondering like was italian was plumber like you know mario from super mario brothers like is that a thing italian people (laughs) and plumbing i am half italian i'm not a plumber (laughs) and it's like i didn't understand that he also said like when he's like whatever groveling for his pasta was a line or something like that on it it's just like so weird Hey, Byron. It's good stuff. You've studied Byron? A little. I used to write some stuff, too. But uh, when you're scrounging for your daily pasta, poetry isn't exactly your main order of business. I'd love to read it. Your poetry. Oh, come on. No, Frank, I- I'm, a, I'm a college professor. English literature is my specialty. I-, I would love to read your poetry. Please? Well... I knock off about 10 o'clock, and uh, once in a while I go up on deck to get some fresh air. Well, maybe I'll meet you up there sometime. Yeah, sometime. Who knows? It's a big ship. But it's a small world. And then it turns out that, no, he isn't just some sort of blue-collar Neanderthal. What did he aspire to be, Michelle? A poet. A hunky poet. <laughs> The best. That is your favorite kind of poet, right? The yeah. hunky variety? Yes. Because he sees that she's reading Byron, and and then uh, she's like, oh, you like Byron? And and he's like, you know, I, well, I dabble. And then she asks the worst thing of all time, like if you make something for someone to say, can I hear like one of your songs or hear one of your poems? And then he later on <laughs> brings one of his poems to recite to her. I was hoping you'd be here tonight. I was hoping you'd be hoping. Did you bring one of your poems? I might have one here somewhere. Cough it up or I'll have to frisk you. Um, You don't want to hear this. Oh, I do. I do, really. By day I wrestle steel and engines purr beneath my deft wrenches. But men are fools. At night I wrestle words, trying to say I love you with unfamiliar tools. That's it. It's rotten, right? It's beautiful. May I keep it? Yeah, sure. Uh, but not for free. Poet has to get paid, or if he isn't a legit poet. Name your price. 
It's yours for, uh, for a dance. What do we do for music? Make our own music. But this is kind of a nice trope, although it's a little bit, uh, you know, obviously like cliched. But the fact that they are, in fact, really kind of liking one another. Yeah. And I mean, she was not like super down with like the whole uh, uh, hookup type of a thing anyway. But she was kind of going along with her friends. And then uh, it turned out that like she was actually making this connection with the mystery plumber that we never see on sh- on the ship ever until today. Right. Oh, He'd been nice. working on the ship for six years. We haven't seen him once. Well... Jane Curtin was never on the cruise ship before, I suppose. They also work him to death because he's like, I have to work. I work till 10. It's like, <laughs> what do you work from 7 in the morning till 10 at night? Hey, like, he's on a cruise ship. Oh, my God. It's like, well, here, let, let's let's jump for where they really work the crew so hard because let's skip and jump to uh, the King of Hutzpah, Phil Silver's uh, uh, Captain Captain Steubing's dad. He is completely overbearing. Uh, the captain is getting very, very tired of his father, and he's asking the crew to um, keep him occupied. Yeah, distract him so he leaves uh, Captain Steubing alone to do his job. His dad keeps butting in, telling him what to do. Now, remember, I'm talking about the crew being worked too hard. Watch how we get there, okay? And so <laughs> they try to get him involved in ping pong. <laughs> and uh, to to no avail. And then all of a sudden, in, in a flurry of crazy activity, zany activity, Isaac spills an entire thing of tomato juice on his shirt. He then heads to the, to what? To the galley? Is that what it's called? The galley? Yeah. He also realizes that they did it on purpose, too. Yeah, he's a pretty sharp guy. Him. He knows yeah. that it's, he, he picked up on that pretty quickly. But he heads straight to the galley as if he, he is the captain of the ship. Oh, and he goes down to get some sea salt to rub the stains out of his shirt rather than just launder it. And he sees uh, a female cook all by herself. I think she's peeling potatoes. No, I don't. Not no, yet. She, she wasn't peeling potatoes yet. She was. She was chopping up an onion. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so it's this one older woman chef in the kitchen, completely alone. <laughs> There's got to be what? How many people on a cruise ship? <laughs> she, Hundreds. She's the only one working in the kitchen. The only person. <laughs> she's all by herself and she's making food for like 600 people Unless by she's herself. She's doing some early prep work before dinner time. So they got one plumber working from 6 in the morning <laughs> till 10 at night and they have one lady in the galley all by well, herself. They almost have one bartender too because Isaac's in every bar at every time of the day. So, <laughs> and so he t- she's like, get out of here, you old barnacle. <laughs> And then he's like, how dare you talk to me that way? It, it, such insubordination. This may be your last cruise. And then she breaks down because it is almost her last cruise. They're forcing her out in the prime of her life, even though she's like, you know, she is retirement aged. Hey, side note. <laughs> and I was just kind of reading a little bit about her because you've seen her before. She's a famous, you know, actress. I didn't know, but I read her stuff. Go ahead. What did you find out? I found out some crazy stuff. Well, about the her. thing I found out that this actually was her last acting and tv appearance ever oh wow i didn't know that well i I don't know what happened but that was her last tv appearance but are you going to talk about her yodeling no she could yodel Uh, she's amazing yeah no i didn't get any of that information i found out that she hang on i I had to write this in a whole different section because it was so lengthy oh also did you know phil silvers was in a movie called the chicken chronicles (laughs) no i remember him in it's a mad 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 world (laughs) that's good with the chicken chronicles i gotta check that out i gotta find that yeah Wait, hang on. Maybe it's on Paramount Plus. Wait, Judy Canova was a comedian, actress, singer, and radio personality. She appeared on Broadway and in films and hosted her own self-titled network radio program from 1943 to 1955. Michelle, do you know that her first husband was named Filberto Rivero? Yes, I did read that, and that is that is Ju- the... Diana Cordova's Canova, father. Canova, not Canova's Cordova. Father. What are you? <laughs> Jeez, Mr. Rourke, it's not a Cordova. <laughs> well, this is that's what's crazy. This woman had like this this illustrious career. I didn't realize that was the end. They didn't even mention the yodeling. Good lord, the woman was very very talented woman, but she was distraught mm-hmm. because they were they were maybe that's where she was drawing upon that real life experience that this was going to be her last yodel, and then she was no longer going to be on television. But Phil Silvers goes in there and. You know, he's a pretty handsome man when you look at that face. Great set of chops. Oh, boy. And then they start, they have that in common with one another. And unbeknownst to them, they start falling for one another. Yes. And then he starts helping her peel potatoes. That was very romantic, but they were also drinking gin together. (laughs) Oh, yeah. That was cute. It was. They had a cute little relationship going. Wait, hang on. (laughs) What the? 
this, this is where Michelle and I, this is where, this is why we're together, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you. We share the same sense of humor and it is very special and it's very unique because he goes into the kitchen. He is at first upset and then he, he asks her what her name is and she says, By the way, I'm PJ Muldoon. But don't get any fancy ideas about my PJs. We like both a- laugh without without knowing the other one's going to laugh because it just made us laugh because it's so ridiculous to us. It's just, a, it's just, I don't even know. Nobody would be named PJ Muldoon now. Well, also, David Landsberg's name was Morton, another person. I've never met a Morton in my life. Again, just keeping the theme going. Won't belabor that, but that's just how it's going. So PJ Muldoon <laughs> is the salty broad making food for the entire ship all by herself. And uh, and then those two start to fall in love. Yeah. Throughout the cruise, PJ Muldoon and Bill Silvers, the king of Futspa, <laughs> end up um, just kind of hanging out in the kitchen a lot. They also go to a movie at some point. Oh, that's right. Which I liked about this because it was kind of cool that they have movies on, on the ship. It was just like a minor thing, but I thought that was kind of cool. Again, Michelle and I want to go on a cruise so bad because there's so many things to do. It looks absolutely insane. Yes, Pacific Princess. <laughs> but yeah, they're like spending lots and lots of time together. And finally, um, Phil Silvers wants to take her to dinner at the captain's table, even though she's technically the help. So PJ Muldoon gets all dressed up. She looks really pretty. They're heading to dinner, only to be met with. Yeah. How do you feel about this one, Michelle? How do you feel about your hero, Captain Meryl Steubing, of how he treated the help? I just didn't understand it. Like, it was a, was he mad because it was like a replacement for his mom? So then he said, like, she's the help and she can't be up here or. You know what? I can't answer that question. I don't know what's going through his head at that point. But all I know is the captain was very. Yeah, it was uncharacteristic of him for sure. Oh, very dismissive. Very rude. It it was not a pleasant side of Meryl Steubing. I've never eaten in the dining room before. Is it squared with Captain Steubing? DJ, my girl, I'm proud to have you sailing in my fleet. That son of mine opens his jab, I'll set him adrift in a lifeboat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, one and all. I have the honor of presenting Mrs. P.J. Muldoon. P.J. Muldoon? Get out the lifeboat. Howdy, y'all. How you doing, Captain? Oh, just, uh, just swell. Come, dear, sit on the captain's right where you belong. That's nice. She's a lot of fun, just listen <laughs> to everything she says. How are y'all? Uh, Forgive my surprise, Dad, but I'm used to seeing Mrs. Muldoon below deck. Are you indeed? The kitchen help. Do not eat in the dining room. Very well, Captain. Come, my dear, we can dine in my cabin. It's small, but it's not as stuffy as it is in here. Come, dear. I always want to Dad? By the way, the, the food always looks amazing there. Weren't we admiring the shrimp cocktail and the you know, shrimp I, cocktail bowls? I've said I like, like I want that every day of my life. But to be honest with you, this time I didn't like it because I love the glass bowls that they're in. Like you put ice in oh, it man, and then you put the awesome. shrimp on top in another bowl, like a liner. But it was gross to me because it's like, it looked like little teeny tiny shrimp, like inside of the cocktail sauce. Oh, and it was just like way too much cocktail sauce <laughs> to where it was making me sick. I, ha- I hated it. I like when it's like you have your shrimp separate and you determine how much you're going to put on it <laughs> and i like a much bigger piece of trip pacific princess i just um, i hope that that's what we are going to encounter when we step aboard i really like a set of those bowls though oh me too the bowls are awesome bowls. no they're awesome i'd eat cereal <laughs> Oh, you put ice in there to keep it cold. Yeah, keep it cold would be great. Be good for ice cream. Or ice too. cream, anything really wow. could be almost really, anything. Really, a multi-purpose bowl there. <laughs> gotta go thrift shopping. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, so like, yeah, he storms out of the room, and then the captain does start to feel bad. I think, right? Of course, because he's the captain. Now, hang on. Before that, I just want to say something where the captain that we know and love. I just want to. I just want to point out, Michelle, and, and I'm wondering if you recall this. In addition to all of his great skills. We learn that he speaks fluent Spanish. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, uh, enter. Mm-hmm. See. Sí. See. Sí. Uh, muchas gracias. Adios. Oh, that's right. He speaks fluent Spanish to the ASPCA in Mazatlan because they're going to come and help them capture the dog. <laughs> the 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 
cartoon character guy. You know? <laughs> Did he look like from like Scooby Doo or he something? Looked... Like a like a security guard from Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was awesome. He had the big giant mustache. He was great. I don't know where they pulled that guy from. That guy should have been credited. He was awesome. The captain, after this encounter in the dining room, I think he thinks better of it and he realizes he was wrong and how he reacted. And uh, so he goes to his dad's room to speak with him and he apologizes, but it still doesn't go well. Well, because he mentions that he wants to marry PJ Muldoon. Oh, that's right. He doesn't. He's like, finally, somebody said it. You've only known her for a short period of time, just like everybody else on the cruise ship. He does. He actually says people fall in love on on the ship every day. And he's like, but then afterwards, and then he like snaps. He's like, he actually does. He addresses that whole thing that we've been talking about, how people fall in love so quickly. But his dad doesn't want to have, he doesn't want to hear it. Oh, and PJ Muldoon is behind the curtains. Some weird curtain in the room. curtain in his room. And then she hears it. Hello, Father. Well, Meryl. What an unexpected bummer. Come in. I came to apologize. I'm afraid I uh, overreacted when you brought your friend to my table. I'm sorry. I accept it. But, Dad, with a whole shipload of passengers, couldn't you have picked somebody... More suitable? Well... Suitable for whom? I didn't go looking for someone to fit into your life. I was looking for someone to fit into mine. Now, look, I know you're lonely. But a cruise ship is a funny place. People fall in love every night. And then when they get off the ship, that's not the case between me and PJ. I've asked her to be my wife. I see. Well, aren't you happy for me? I'm happy for me. Sure, I'm happy for you. I'm happy that you finally found someone whose company you enjoy. But marriage... Okay, Meryl. I see where you stand. But I'm going to marry PJ with... Or without your blessing. Now I'm you stay out of my life, and I'll stay out of yours. Go on. Get up on the bridge where you belong. How do they how do they resolve that though? I can't now I'm not remembering. Like how does how does that come to some sort of conclusion, those guys I, where like he's no longer angry with him? I believe perhaps he listens to the captain and then and sees that he's accepting. I know they invite him to a dinner again and kind of acknowledge her retirement. So maybe that's how it all kind of resolves by the captain reaching out, inviting them to the final dinner. Yeah, maybe it's just they like celebrate a gradual... her retirement a little bit. Yeah, and he basically like redeems himself by yeah, like you said, like allowing her into yeah. the into the dining area. Well, you think you would anyway? It's her. Fi- she's been on a ship for forty years. No, let's just keep her making a giant pot of soup that that <laughs> gopher comes waltzing into and then has a taste of it. <laughs> well, that, oh my God, you know what? <laughs> and this is something I can't share with you guys. You have to watch the show. Okay, because let me bounce back. Like, Gary Berghoff, you know, Radar, he's been stuck in, in his room the entire time with this German shepherd that will not let him go, you know? And then towards the very, very end, he finally does get out. And what we find out is that, like, insanely, not only was the dog in there, but the dog was pregnant. And had puppies. Had puppies. Then they all come in thinking that they're just trying to like uh, uh, free him from the room finally. And then they see all these cute little puppies uh, in the room, which he had named. Oh, no. This is Gopher, Doc, and Ju- No, wait a minute. Oh, stay. This is Gopher, Doc, Julie, Gopher, and Isaac. <laughs> then I guess the little bald one at the end is... Uh, Don't say it. <laughs> But um, the weirdest thing is during the, the, the PJ Muldoon sort of victory lap in the dining room, they do the weirdest edit. Remember when you, t- you mentioned the edit where it was like the zoom in, I think, on Julie's face? This one, they do the weirdest, blurriest, like, cut to Gary Berghoff eating soup. Like <laughs> He's famished. He's been trapped in it. But they showed him eating like crazy earlier, and then they just for no reason go back to him, and it's just like this <laughs> silent, like maybe like three seconds of him slurping up soup really fast. Perhaps and that soup PJ Muldoon made earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it was so weird. It was such a strange choice, and I didn't understand it because it completely took you out of that little scene, which was nice. 
Oh, but at the end, you know what else they did that I didn't remember from the first time? See, I thought like I'd be furious if this happened, but at the end, the crew all lays a complete ticket for another trip. Yeah, I do him. remember that. They 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 made amends, and he got to come back on another cruise. That's pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah, that was nice of them because it did. Like, it's got to be expensive, and then like he he would miss the entire trip, and he was very cool about it. You know, he wasn't mad or mean or anything. And he got puppies. It's actually very sweet because like when he says the names of all of them, you remember how sweet he was as the radar character and what a lovable guy he mm -hmm. was because he really the way he said the names of all the dogs, I thought was like super cute. And um, he just again, a lot of those actors, man, from our time were awesome because they were like real people, you know, like people that looked like regular people. And really, their personalities were the things I think that came out uh, beyond anything else. They had something to offer. They had something special. And it wasn't just like some flawless look or anything like that, which makes you believe anything a lot more than you would otherwise. You know, everybody's it makes like them a more Viking. realistic and, and like real people. Yeah. And it's like, why did people watch MASH as long as they did? Or why did anybody watch? Because like we've said already, that's you look forward to seeing these people and the people that they cast are really good. In many of these instances, like with some of the older people, I didn't even know. Like I didn't know about this woman and what she had accomplished. It's pretty incredible. So, yeah, they wrap that up. And then Meryl... I, I think sees the error of his ways and then you see these two older people who had this real really unique parallel with one another and Meryl was ecstatic because he's like I'm not gonna have to deal with my dad all the time now let PJ Muldoon handle this guy you know right she gets to deal with him and make him soup he and says food. that at the end he says like you've taken on the burden greater than what you've done on this ship <laughs> it was under the guise of being nice but it was kind of like a little dig towards his father hmm. You know what? Also, Jane Curtin's really pretty. She is. She's so pretty. And it's like, I don't think of her that way because I always think of her on SNL and she was always, you know, like Lisa Lubner's mom or, you know, on the on the, the news, the update thing. I and thought she was pretty when she was on the news, though, when I was a kid. I just, it's Although also... she was treated like right, weird by... Right. That's how I think Chevy of Chase. all that stuff. So I, it, because it, it, it was presented the way that it was, I wasn't thinking in terms of looks. And again, she was always playing sort of characters, but her sort of reactions on the show and her smile and just just her in general. She's so pleasant. Yeah, she just really is. And then she's just so naturally pretty. I thought like the, the chemistry between those two people was really nice. Mm -hmm. And and uh, although it's over the top and, you know, super sort of like uh caricature-ish uh, I still thought it was sweet uh, the two of them together and she just comes across so real to me and uh, she was really enjoyable to watch and I really believed their storyline with one another oh god <laughs> this is the best part Joanna Kearns and the other person I apologize Susan yes they are it's heading towards the end of the cruise they're on the the deck of the ship in the evening and they're just kind of like they're almost flipping it like where guys would be sort of like these cads and like haha like we we hooked up with these women they're flipping the script and they're doing it so they're on the ship and uh saying how are we going to end this with these guys and then they're talking about Jane Curtin right right and how she's going to do it. And they're like, oh, she'll probably do it in some sort of like, you know, classy literary way. And then what's happening in the background? Plumbers lurking in the dark shadows of the cruise ship. Smoking a pipe. Yeah, that's right. Smoking a pipe under the stairs. He's creepy in under the dark. <laughs> He's just under there. Like some it's sort so of random. Jack the Ripper underneath the <laughs> stairs. He's listening to this, but he's getting his heart broken because Why don't he you thinks... just be out on like the deck or something? Because he's the help. The you can't be seen. You have to stay in the shadows. But he's not working because he's not in his jumpsuit. So what? They don't want you. They don't want you rubbing elbows with the with the or with the passengers ever. So you have to just stay in the shadows at all times, smoking, smoking your, your pipe. pipe. <laughs> like they didn't smell his pipe smoke. Yeah. So then after that, directly after that, he gets the news. So he feels he's been had this whole time and that he was just the butt of a joke. And he, you know, he's a sensitive poet. So this is like, Correct. this is hurting him. I can understand where he's coming from. Yeah. And then Jane Curtin looking as cute as can be with like flowers in her hair and this lovely dress. She comes running towards him because she's excited to see him. And then he is, he is so upset. He is so crestfallen and hurt. And then she doesn't understand what's wrong. He... Uh, explains like, you know, like, like you got what you wanted. And then he gives her a breakup poem. I'm sorry I'm late. That's okay. I just wanted to say, see you around. What's wrong? Nothing. We both had the perfect cruise. Fun-filled nights, et cetera, et cetera. But enough's enough. Frank, what's the matter? Let me put it in a poem. Fun is fun. Uh, but now it's done. 
Spit that in your scrapbook. That was a really lovely breakup poem. That was just off the top of the dome, man. He just came up with that one right then and there, you know, because he wasn't prepared for that. And then she's kind of confused, and then she's kind of hurt. But then a little bit later, which is kind of funny, I thought, he's in his stateroom, and all of a sudden there's a knock on the door, and the two friends burst in because they know that their friend has been hurt, even though it's their fault. Correct. All right, all right, take it easy. What's the... You are a bum and a rat. You're a plummy plumber. A crummy plumber. He knows what I mean. What's bugging you two? You are an animal, Frank. The way you treated Regina, I mean, you broke her heart for no good reason. Big deal, I dumped her. I only beat her to the punch. Isn't that how you play your uh, romance roulette? Uh. Yeah. Yeah, I heard the two of you up on the deck. Just because I'm a working stiff doesn't mean I could be exploited by some chick playing a schoolgirl game. All right, all right. Maybe we were playing around. But the poor kid was dead serious, Frank. Right. Like how she was. Now, will you please leave? Will you? What are you two doing here? We were just trying to straighten out your idiot plumber. Well, if there's any straightening out to be done, I'll do it myself. Now, everybody out. Well, Regina, we were just... You heard me out. Beat it. Scram. <laughs> Sorry about my friends. And I just came to say goodbye. So say it. Before I do, I, I just want to tell you that the past three days have been the best... Good. Your romance will let paid off. That's what games are for, to have fun. You know about that? Yeah. Well, Frank, what we had wasn't a game. Yeah, sure. Oh, I, I know it started out as a game, and I'm, I'm sorry it did, and I'm ashamed. Because somewhere along the line, it, it stopped being a game. I meant every word I said to you. But you came to say goodbye. I didn't hear you sing it. I can't. I don't want to. I don't want to lose you. I don't... You what? I can't put it into words. You're an English professor. Even a slob like me knows how to say I love you. I do, you know. Oh, Frank, I love you, too. As typical on the love boat, they make up. Jane Curtin and the hunky poet plumber. And they're also going to get married because he, there was a running joke where, like, she dropped her ring down the sink and that's why she called him initially. And then he wraps the whole cruise up by saying, I found your ring in the sink. And she's like, I didn't lose my ring. And then it's an engagement ring. See, that's cute it's television clever. writing. That's when you tell the kids, I guess, later. Because I'm not looking for Byron or Shelley on this show. I'm looking for that. And for them to tie it up in that way, I think is adorable. And I think it's like, bravo. Wait, who wrote that one? The the romance roulette. Howard Albrecht and Saul Weinstein. I'm going to say Saul was responsible for that one. I think that was fantastic. At least he had time to get down to the gift store and get her an engagement ring. Is that where he got it? Or he'd snatch it from a woman when he was lurking in the <laughs> He's shadows. He's also a cat burglar. He goes into different cabins and That's steals. That's true. <laughs> That's why you never saw him again. He probably got arrested. He was Jim Neighbor's cousin. And oh, he stole that's jewels. so true. <laughs> Yeah, so like, I mean, that's that's basically it. You know, PJ Muldoon and uh, the King of Hutzpah come on down and like they're going to get hitched too. And then he said he was going to like, they were going to get a place in like what, like San Pedro so he could be near the ship. Yes. <laughs> oh, and, and then like a, in a twist too, back to the romance roulette, the Joanna Kearns character ends up falling for her like nerdy guy. Oh yeah, I almost forgot for Morton. Yeah. yeah. And then they... They will hook up at the end, and then somehow it really turns around where she's carrying all the luggage, and then he's bossing her around, where, like, the whole time she's kind of, like, this bossy woman. Yeah, and she's, like, way taller than him. She's, like, a full foot taller than him, so they're, like, a total odd couple, and that was kind of a fun little teeny, like, even secondary goofy uh, storyline. Of course, like, Doc and Susan, they they part with no trouble. Yeah, Doc really knows how to just like hook <laughs> have a good up time. and and cleanly just say goodbye to everybody. Didn't they he make has... a joke about how they had seven marriages between the two of them? Yeah, and they'll have to keep getting it right. He also just said something about Har- Harvey Wallbanger that I found completely oh, yeah, that, shocking. That, that, that off color. Holy joke. cow, man! Doc is Innuendo. cleaning up all <laughs> on the high seas, man. Like that guy's got it made. He's got the best job in the entire world. And that's the thing. Let me just 
I know we're wrapping this up, but I, I forgot that. Like, he never has to work. <laughs> He's always like mingling at the bar, and he's a doctor. He was setting the up the only ping pong doctor table on the at ship. some point. That was his job. Let me set up the net on the ping pong table. And then the the hunky plumber he's always working, has man. to work till all 10 the PM. time till ten p.m. every single night. Right. It's insane. But I mean, all in all, uh, this was a fun episode. It was. I like when you see backstory and you see family members and things like that. And it's also interesting too like like Joanna Kearns and stuff like you know that's obviously an early first acting role for her and then to see later in life where she ended up in a really famous TV show. Yeah that's fun mm-hmm. when you see those people and you're like oh wow and she looked exactly the same basically. She pretty much did. Yeah and it's like the thing about Judy Canova I didn't know that that was her mom so like it's they're they're from sort of like this entertainment family. Yeah. Yeah, so that pretty much sums it up, you guys. Uh, Thank you for joining us on this cruise. Now, I want to point out before we say goodbye, I'm assuming most of you guys are already following our Instagram page, but it's still relatively new. So it's at Lovin' the Love Boat, right? Correct. L-O-V-I-N, Love Boat. Lovin' the Mm -hmm. Love Boat. Okay, is Love Boat one or two? Dashes. Oh, it's dashes in between. You'll find it. Love in the Love Boat uh, on Instagram because my birthday was, it fell on Easter this year, and I got an awesome surprise if you haven't seen it already, but the Ted Lange, Isaac himself, wished me a happy birthday. I was completely unprepared for it, and it was the nicest surprise. So we have that up in our Reels section, and I think it's one of the posts as well. So you can go see that. Isaac wishing me, making him say the name Ishvan is one of the greatest joys I've ever had in my entire life. And it's not the entire message. We just posted the highlights of that message. Believe it or not, on the last episode, we were talking about having drinks. So we are going to start doing it. We should have done it today, but we things are getting kind of crazy and hectic around here. So we're, we're, we're having to do this kind of quickly. But the first drink that we are going to make, he gave a recipe in the message. He didn't know this. This was just coincidental for a drink called the Isaac. So we are going to share that with you and I will post the video up for you guys so you can see it. And so you guys can make the drink yourself. But um, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, it will. So we're going to start having drinks. We'll probably post those things. We'll do different ones throughout. If anyone has suggestions of drinks they've had on cruises or when they've been on vacation, when Michelle and I went to Hawaii, it was my favorite thing to have colorful tropical drinks. It was awesome. There was never a bad one that I had. It was so fun. Guess we would have to make a screwdriver at some point. (laughs) That's great. Could have done that tonight out yeah. of vodka and orange That's juice. true. That's true. All right. So next time we're going to, uh, we'll post the uh, the Isaac very, very soon so you can see more of him because he was just totally incredible. He He's just the greatest. We love he's, him. He's still super cool. He's exactly how he was oh my when gosh. he was Isaac on the love boat. It's he's so everything you would hope. He's amazing and wonderful. And that's the thing. This show is all about love. This show is all about happiness and fun and silliness and sometimes some seriousness too and that's why we love it so much so hope you guys had a good time hope you're enjoying all the shows um be sure to join us for the next episode and until then i am ishvan i'm michelle captain stewing captain stewing please come to the bridge and we're loving the the love love boat. boat